you. So um, one of the things I'd like to bring up is perimenopause is a part of the woman's cycle where she has the highest estrogen of her whole lifetime and the lowest progesterone. Progesterone is already becoming low from an ovulatory cycles and short luteal phase. And um, estrogen um, gets the signaling from the pituitary to, to pump out more and there'll be more and more. So these women are, are in desperate need of, of estrogen metabolism, like the sulforazine supplies all the sulfur you need, uh, which is important for many, many of the conjugations. So I'm, I'm on this Facebook group. It's called the Estrogen Dominant Support Group. It's really, um, really quite the deal. But then to also deal with that, you need progesterone and you need a lot of it. And many women who are suffering from that also may have a problem with overgrowth of yeast. And uh, Jeff T and I did uh, a thing on yeast. Did we put that on YouTube? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I sent you the... Um, the slides, but we had done a thing on yeast. And as yeast are overgrowing, uh, this is a profound effect on the endocrine system. There are so many organisms, there are yeast organisms that produce estradiol, there are other organisms that bind, bind up hormones. Uh, they, uh, I, I have a chart with those slides I sent over to you and, and Jeff T and I did this program. So this, this is profound. So to deal with this uh, yeasty like problem is, is a big deal. So then we have the, um, it's called enterohepatic recirculation. And um, Roland referred to this a bit. And this is when your liver conjugates, makes water soluble, does, does the sulfuration, glucuronidation, the um, methylation, makes estrogen water soluble, and it goes into your gut for disposal. However, if your uh, gut is disordered by um, bacteria that produce beta-glucuronidase, those conjugates are cle cleaved off. The, the hormone is now no longer water soluble and it'll get reabsorbed right back into the body. So you can sort of auto intoxicate yourself with more and more estrogen, men and women both. I'd like to say a word about uh, oh, calcium deglucurate is sometimes used for that, but um, basically um, helping recreate a healthy microbiome in general, as we're, we're talking about all the time would be helpful. Then I'd like to touch on PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And this is not a syndrome that is women only, it's men too. And the hallmarks of this is you don't have enough progesterone, you don't have enough hydrocortisone, you have potentially excessive testosterone, you have excessive DHEA, depending on which system, or you could, could actually have both. But an interesting thing that happens with PCOS, and I was listening to Felice Gersh, and she also says this is uh, a thing that also applies to people who are aging. They have disrupted microbiomes in, in the sense that the variety of microbes and the amount of healthy microbes are not there. So they have very restricted microbiomes. So that needs to be treated. In men, the, the same sort of syndrome exists. One of the, the prime uh, red flags for PCOS in men is uh, premature balding. When you see young men balding in their 30s, that's, that's insulin resistance. And that's, that's the equivalent uh, syndrome in men. And if you look around, you see so many young men shaving their heads because uh, they're in this situation and they're going to their doctors and trying to grow, grow hair with drugs, but you really need to look at the uh, insulin resistance and, and get this endocrine thing um, um, looked at. Endometriosis in women, again, a high estrogen, you need, you need good estrogen metabolism, but it's all connected big association with overgrowth of candida and very various yeasty kind of things. Any kind of autoimmune disease like autoimmune thyroid 
uh, Hashimoto's, you need to look at the gut first. You're never going to uh, heal that situation unless the gut is healed. That's that's the focus of that dysregulation. Um, people get uh, women, particularly men less so, get prescribed all these fake hormones like birth control pills, um, synthetic estrogens, synthetic progesterone. These are prime pushers of overgrowth of candida in the, in the body. So you wonder where it comes from. It comes from uh, medically prescribed treatments that, that disrupt the uh, microbiome. 